Hi, I'm Steph and this is Tosh. In my last two videos I shared that my dog Mac recently passed away and today I wanted to share the euthanasia process. I, I will say when I first got a dog, I was, the thing I was most scared about was, you know, the dog dying and what that was going to look like one day. Uh, so I am going to show you, my mom filmed the whole process of Mac being euthanized and I'm going to share that. So full warning, um, you are going to see uh, Mac pass away. Um, so you're going to see the whole process and um, I'm going to narrate it so you can kind of know what's going on, but you'll see me, Mac, the vet tech, the vet, that's what you're about to see. So if that's not something that you want to see or are ready to see, feel free to not watch this video. Um, but I, I feel like it's important. It's something that I, I would have probably wanted to have seen before I got a dog to kind of know what that was like. Um, so that's why I'm sharing it. So um, here you go. In my last video, I shared how Mac and I spent our last day together. But after we did all that, we arrived at the vet's office and we actually went through the back entrance, which was nice because Mac normally gets anxious when she goes to the vet. Once we arrived in the room, Amber, our vet tech, explained the cremation process and asked if I wanted any specific urn. And I told her that we are going to spread Mac's ashes, so the urn didn't really matter to me. She also told me that the cremation package includes the ashes back, the urn, a paw print of Mac, and they'll include a little bit of fur as well. Amber left to get some supplies and I was holding Mac back here because she's always curious when people come and go from the room. She's always just wants to know what's going on. But I did try to give her some chocolate to see if she would eat it and she actually didn't want the chocolate. Um, and then they had some spray cheese in the room so I tried to see if she wanted that. She didn't have any interest but I had brought some meat patties that my mom had cooked her and she did eat those. We did bring one of her dog beds from home and I was trying to get her to lay on it but she never had any interest in laying on it so not super necessary to bring that. They did have some blankets that they had on the floor that she could have laid on but again you'll see at the end she doesn't really lay on anything. Amber came in with another vet tech and they set up for giving Mac her IV but first Amber told me the pricing of everything and this is me actually being surprised at the price because I thought it was going to cost way more. So the breakdown of the price was $120 for the euthanasia and then $265 for the cremation service. And so that includes everything that I'll show at the very end what was included with, with the cremation service. And then I did have to sign a document that basically was saying that I know that my dog is being euthanized and that I release the body to um, my vet's office to, you know, proceed with the next step. So it's, uh, you know, just part of the process. This tray has all the stuff that's needed to put in the IV catheter. So that is what Amber is doing right here. She first shaved Mac's leg a little bit and then she put a needle in to put the IV catheter and then she's wrapping some medical tape around to hold it in place and then she's going to put a wrapping on top of that and then amber is just putting some um, saline solution in right now and this kind of clears the line i don't know much more beyond that <laughs> uh or flushing the line is what they said they called it With that done, we're now just waiting for the vet to come in to administer the drugs and Mac is still very curious about who is at the door. And here's my vet, Dr. Combs. She just came in with Amber and she's just chatting with me a little bit and I'm talking about kind of how things progress so quickly with Mac and the pain. And, and before she got started, Dr. Combs told me that she wasn't sure exactly how Mac would react to the medications because in the past when they've given Mac anesthesia, for example, to do like a teeth cleaning, she would actually really fight um, kind of being being put to sleep because she, you know, is always wants to be aware of what's going on. So she wasn't sure kind of how Mac would react. So she just wanted to kind of give me fair warning. And then Dr. Combs went over the four injections that she was about to do for Mac. Just flush. 
which is usually like I make sure the IV is still nice and patent. And then this is the propofol, which is like sedative. And then I flush in between, and then the pink is the euthosol. But it's so pretty. How can it be it so It's so pretty. You gotta go out in some, some bright pink. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. The whole process was pretty fast, but also kind of slow. Um, they actually spent about an hour in the room with us and just kind of talked to us and made sure we were really comfortable and asked many times if we wanted to be alone with Mac, if we needed some more time. And, you know, we we were ready. We had spent enough time with her. And here we're just chatting a little bit before the injection process. Such a good girl. Such a good girl. Such a good girl. Yeah. Okay, that's pink, mm. yellow, white. It's pink, yellow, white. Okay. Yes, white. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Good. 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 And here she is administering the last drug. Um, I will say, when I lived this moment, um, I just had eye contact with Mac the whole time. Kind of everything else in the room just disappeared. So it was a peaceful moment for us. I. I tried to clear my eyes a lot so I could keep looking at her, at her eyes. And um, right after she administered, you can see Dr. Combs is checking for a heartbeat. And um, that's kind of how she knew it was the end. But I kind of wanted to include this because, uh, and you might have seen a little jerk. Um, the body can make little jerks here and there after, um, there, after the body's dead. Um, but you can see she just looks like she's sleeping. And this is kind of how greyhounds sleep. Um, and she just still was herself after after that moment. And it wasn't really wasn't scary. It was very peaceful. I will say she did pee a little bit, which is pretty normal for a dog to do um, when the drugs are administered. Um, but it was not a big deal. And I actually didn't really know it. Amber kind of just cleaned it up and I didn't even realize that had happened. And then we just sat and they just sat and I just kind of booped Mac's nose, something I like to do. She was kind of annoyed by it, but not today. And we just sat with her and just talked a little bit. I talked about uh, some of the scars she had on her and what they were from and the times I got to see her run and all those things. So I just kind of relived some of those memories. It was really, really nice that um, Dr. Combs and Amber sat with me and just let me talk and just gave me the space I needed. And again, they asked if I wanted to be alone with her, um, after this and, and I didn't, I didn't need that, but it was very non-dramatic. Again, my vet thought, you know, it might be dramatic at the end and she went down really easy and that was because she was ready. And then exactly one week later, I got the ashes of Mac. Um, the company that my vet 
uses is called Forever Friends, and it's a company about 30 minutes actually from my vet's office. So very, very local, which is awesome. So they cremated her and included some of her fur and a paw print, and then this really nice cedar box with the ashes in it. And again, this is just kind of the package that they offer at my vet's office. Um, I did want to look at the ashes because I was kind of curious what the state was. So it was just one little screw and I could pull off the bottom piece here. And it was nice. They actually vacuum sealed the ashes so that they were nice and protected in this bag. I will be spreading the ashes um, soon and I'm going to be keeping her leash and tag in this box as a little memory keepsake. All right, so that was heavy. That was heavy in real life. That was heavy editing. That was heavy remembering all of the things. If you have questions about it, if there's something I didn't explain in the video, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to, to answer that. I am in communication with my vet and the vet tech and I have a friend that's a certified vet tech so um, I can get some of those questions answered from them as well. So thanks for joining me today for this heavy video. And I do really hope you have a great day.